Today we're at a beautiful lakeside development here in Chelmsford where our friend Sean Pidmore has actually built 20 flats, seven detached houses on this beautiful lake. And we're here to find out a lot more about how Sean actually got the planning permission for this site, the challenges that he experienced. And if he was to do it again, what do you actually do? Planning development, something we've been working on this for about seven years now with my partner. We got it with an outline permission and uh, originally they were looking at putting houses all the way around the edge, but that wasn't practical. So we came up with the concept of doing apartments and then bigger lakeside houses, which is what we've ended up building out. So Sean, developments like this isn't for the faint-hearted and I'm guessing this isn't your first development. Maybe for the viewers out there, if we can just discuss how you actually came through property and ended up in this position, a little bit about your background. Yeah, sure. I mean, construction property is not my background. Uh, betting shops, my family business that uh, I went to uh, from school. Um, we sold that in 2005, built up probably 40 shops we opened over the years. Uh, I really enjoyed that, but it was time to move on. My dad was retiring. I've always had buy to lets, wanted to do something on the next level, I build something from scratch. Uh, teamed up with a couple of developers. First one did a lovely little development in Chelmsford, uh, but that guy only wanted to do the odd one here and there. I met another guy, Rick Tappenden, who's my current partner we decided that uh, we wanted to do more developments had about three small sites in the company at the time I bought into that and then we've just gradually increased it over the years culminating in this site uh, one just up the road and we've got a, a site in Bremel which we've just finished as well this is a huge site where did this all begin okay well, we first became aware of this site about eight years ago and um, it was this is one particular phase out of six on this particular part of the development there's about 750 houses obviously not all ours on this part this was the unusual bit it's not a plc site it's uh, big houses a lot of construction so seven years ago we were aware of it had outline planning we took it through a detailed planning stage which took i think two to three years um, and ended up with the design evolved into this 20 apartments and the seven houses then probably about six nine months after that we started construction but then we ran into covid which caused delays getting hold of stuff uh, just everything as we all know uh, that uh, difficult period that we went through uh, first of all we had to drain the lake we then built the houses seven houses along there uh, and then the apartments was a quite a, it was not an easy project to do we had to dig out the whole of the embankment shore it up with enormous probably 30 meter steels going into the ground which uh, were driven down over the course of about three weeks big concrete frame and then the apartments were built, which probably took, the build probably took three years. I think it should have taken two, but with the delays during COVID, it ended up taking three. So the first development that you actually did, was that just a new build house or a block of flats? Yeah, the, the very first one that I did was uh, five houses in Chelmsford. Um, lovely little development, two and three beds. Um, I thought that was quite a big project at the time, but looking back, it was quite straightforward and uh, they all sold and they're still there today. We're proud of those. Uh, but we just got into yeah more complicated more uh, interesting projects now did you scale from five houses to ten houses and how, uh, how did you scale up yeah no good point um no it wasn't linear um we did sites we've done sites for uh what did we go we've done 35 sites uh, 35 houses and flats in chelmsford and um, we actually built the ambulance station for chelmsford uh, as part of a land swap uh, we've done a development of a uh, in Rittle, which is not far from here. We built the um, like the village hall and uh, converted the old building. Uh, we've built sites for 20, one for 42 down by Gatwick Airport, um, 15 apartments, small blocks of apartments. So it's been a bit of a mixture, but it's we seem to have three big sites come up. This one, one up the road, which is a chunk bigger than this, and uh, say so one in Brentwood for 30 units. They all came about the same time, about seven or eight years ago, and that's really with planning and building through COVID has kept us busy over the last oh, few wow. years. Now these houses out here went for a second about 1.8 million pounds. Now for 1.8 million pounds, I'm guessing the buyers have certain expectations. So is there certain things that you needed to ensure that you put in? Yeah, maybe sure. like air conditioning, maybe other aspects? Yeah, no, the houses are air conditioned. Uh, put jacuzzi, jacuzzis onto the, um, onto the decking, luxury bathrooms, expensive kitchens. Um, yeah, they're well fitted out. And uh, in order to justify that price, which is probably 
50% higher than anything that's been sold for new in Chelmsford before. Um, you have to finish them off to a certain standard. Now with the 20 flats that you had, did you run through a similar concept with the houses or have you modified the approach when you focused uh, on the no, these, apartments? These again, these, these apartments, uh, half a million pound upwards and uh, so they thought they've broken the barrier in Chelmsford as well so we had, we knew we had to provide something very special to go with this location so uh, yeah a lot of effort went into the detailed design uh, obviously making the most of having verandas terraces on all of the apartments uh, overlooking the lake so you can enjoy the views. Now this is probably the first time I've been to a development that has a lake what actually upkeep goes into maintaining a lake? The lake's actually okay it's um, you know, it's got fish in there. Um, it's, yep, yeah, it, it doesn't require a lot of maintenance, a bit of trimming around the edges, but we did quite a lot of work on it when we first came here and it's really set up to be as low maintenance as possible. Now we have a new government, mm -hmm. a Labour government. Andrew Arena has come out and said, over the course of five years, we need to produce 1.5 million homes. How achievable do you think that is? And what changes are actually needed to actually meet the demand for those 1.5 million mm. homes? Yeah, I, I was quite pleased with the Labour government because they've been uh, everything they've been saying on the run up to the election has been very positive and very pro housing. Uh, we've run, although you, know, you probably guess which way I'd vote, but um, or previously voted. Uh, traditionally, traditionally where we've tried to get sites, NIMBYism is a massive thing, mm. and we generally run into a lot of opposition. So seeing a new approach was was very welcome. Um, achieving 1.5 million houses in five years is going to be a, tuss, a bit of an ask. It's going to be tough. can be done. Um, you need to fully resource the planning departments. You need to reimpose housing targets, which um, Michael Gove abandoned. Uh, Angela Rayner and the Labour government said they're bringing it back in, which is imperative because that means that certain all local authorities have to reach a certain amount of housing. They have to provide that, which makes them a lot harder to defend sites where developers are going in. So um, I think it's got a chance, but they need to really get on with it. And with the time scales that I've already talked about, three years from make it, finding a site to getting mm -hmm. a permission, you know, to try and get all those houses built in five years is going to be, I would say, they'd be doing well to do it. Do you think they'll need to incorporate more permitted development rights or prior approval rights? Uh, yeah, I think those things will be very good. I did read the other day they were talking about um, making it easier to build up. Um, which I think would be a good thing so people can maximise the accommodation. If you've got a house sitting on a site, if you can build backwards and upwards and provide more accommodation, then that's got to be a good thing. So um, that would definitely be part of it. Being able to turn commercial properties into uh, residential properties will definitely be helpful. There's a lot of redundant properties out there. If they can be brought back to life, um, repurposed, then you know, I think that's fabulous. Now, I'm guessing there's some challenges when coming to build on a lake? Yeah, no, what? I mean, with the, with the lake here, eight acre lake, we had to drain that lake to build all the retaining walls all the way around. So that was one thing, which to drain an eight acre lake by about a metre is a lot of water. That took a long time to do that. Wow. Uh, and then with the, the side that we built these, built these apartments, we had to um, basically dig out the whole of the banks, probably 20 metres down. Yeah. Um, and then put a steel wall driving uh, great big plates of steel in the whole length of it, it's probably 40 metres along. So that took about three weeks of constantly driving those in uh, and then we had a great big st uh, concrete frame we had to construct that the building is built around. So it was, it's quite a project, it's a one-off. Uh, was this the most time consuming part then with the apartments, with putting the subframe and... Getting everything done, the basics, yes, which generally with building is, but this was obviously more of a challenge and the design process was quite long as well, having to get everything exactly how we wanted it. I'm guessing this must be a unique one for yourself or is this uh, something that you've... No, this is, yeah, this is the only thing we've done like this. We've, ah. we've converted a grade two listed building, we've done a couple of those, uh, but, and we've done regular houses, but uh, no, we haven't any, done anything quite like this before. So Sean, what would your advice be to a budding developer that would want to develop a complex such as this? Okay, so I think um, start small, start slowly, learn how it works. Uh, this is not to be taken on by, you know, you, it's not for the faint hearted, uh, but it can be done, but it's not without its challenges. So take your time, get used to it. Every development has its challenges and I think uh, this had more than, more than most. So it's yet yeah, just uh, build up to it slowly. Now the bit that everyone wants to know is, what are the numbers? Can you give us a high level 
overview? Yeah, sure, sorry, at a high level. So um, on this particular project, the build cost, rather than a typical 200, 225 a foot for a normal house, we're probably looking at 300, 350 a foot with the complications we had during construction. By the time you've bought the land, you've paid all the, uh, the various professional fees and the build, the site probably stands us in over 20 million. So it's, it's quite a big project in order to, uh, yeah, and it's got to be financed and hopefully you can make a profit on it at the end. Now, thank you, Sean, for that. Now, if you like that, hit that like, subscribe button, leave a comment. We're actually back now with the Elevate series powered by Shawbrook, where we're actually going to be running through various topics. One of them is how you can profit now with the new changing government. If you want further details of that, that's in the description. We hope to see you there.